Hey everybody, this is Red Silvers, and welcome to this first episode of Let's Play The Legend of Zelda. But this isn't just The Legend of Zelda, this is The Legend of Zelda in 3D. Because this is a special emulator called 3D Sen, which I got off Steam. I've been watching the development of it a bit, because uh, one of the people that I watch on YouTube has been putting out a lot of content for it. And I thought that this looked really neat, so I wanted to I wanted to record Zelda at some point anyway, so I thought this would be a fun way to do it. So this is not the ROM itself that's in 3D, like this is all done in the emulator. And should have this all mapped, I can move my joystick here. And you can get that 3D effect, which I think is really cool. Kind of takes a little bit of getting used to, to fiddle with it, but the actual ROM itself is just your regular Legend of Zelda ROM. It's the emulator that does all this. Now, it might take me a bit to get this camera where I want it again, but I kind of thought like the little 3D offset would be kind of nice here. That's... Still bugging me just a little bit. I like this design though. It looks I think this looks really cool. There's a few games that work with this. But that's gonna bug me now that I got it all wrong. Well that's cool the way that the camera moves up there. There's a few games that work with this emulator. Like Mega Man 1, 2, and 3. Mario Brothers 1, Mario Brothers 3, DuckTales, Chip and Dale. As far as I know, nothing else has changed other than the graphics. I don't know how this would work if you did something like, say, a Zelda Randomizer ROM, if that would work or if it would be all funky. That'd be interesting to test, actually. That camera's still not how I want it. But you can do all kinds of stuff. You can zoom around, you can see behind stuff. You can see the water's going up, up over the bridge here. So first thing I'm going to do is what I would normally do. I'd head to the level 1 so I can go pick up that boomerang. If I don't die horribly. That's okay. We're gonna head up that way anyway. And I think in the dungeon is where this, this particular angle is gonna look really good. But when we go up this way, I'll show you the levers. I think the levers look really cool. They have that 3D effect too. Of course, the camera does make it kind of a little hard to tell sometimes where you're in their hitbox or not. Let's just ignore these guys and run to the dungeon and see how cool this looks. What I think is really weird is if you flip it around here. You can see the, the cave underneath there. So yeah, let's set this in 3D. This looks really cool. And I can just sit and fill around the 3D in this. Some of the games look cooler than others. There's quite a few. But I think level one here is going to go really well. Unless I died at like the first Alphos or something, which would be really sad. See, that's just crooked enough, it keeps bugging me. Hmm. 
Well, there's a clock that'll work. Give me a heart. So we can stop the beep beep. That's pretty much how I always do Zell the, the first quest. I always come right for the first dungeon. I don't bother with going and getting the candle and stuff before the first dungeon, because I want to get that boomerang. I can already tell the dark nuts are going to be a big pain until I get used to this camera. Go ahead and go fill in this room, even though we don't have to go here. I like that the blocks look like pyramids, they're not just flat blocks. Because that's kind of what the shading implies, but you don't necessarily fill in that part when you're looking at it from just one angle. I could just sit and fill around with the 3D in this emulator for hours. But I think of all the games, this is the one that I like the 3D in the most. I think they're still working on profiles for other games, like Zelda 2 would be a fun one to see. No Mario Brothers 2 yet, either. They're just Mario 1 and Mario 3, and then old school Mario Bros. A lot of the games that they have are like the Zapper games, like Duck Hunt is really cool. But... I would imagine you use the mouse for Duck Hunt, because I can't imagine how else you would. Actually, I'm not sure, as I say, I'm not sure what their boomerangs will look like when they throw them. A lot of the guys on Let's Racing Time have been racing Zelda randomizers, so maybe I will fiddle with a with this. I'll see if you can put in a Zelda randomized ROM and see what happens. That would be interesting if it worked. A little side scroller room here. That's kind of a cool look. I do wish that there was a button just to go back to, like, the default graphics. Because it's kind of hard to get the camera angle spot on where I want it. Oh yeah, not only can you uh, spin it around, you can zoom in. So you can really, you know, see that 3D. I mean, like I said, I could just sit, sit and fiddle around with the 3D for a bit and be totally happy with this. But I do wish there was a way to just, like, quickly go back to the default position. See, like, that feels like it's still off. That is still off, it's overlapping the map, but we're zoomed in a bit. Let's go fight these Glorias.
Even the enemies are kind of angled like they expect you to be looking at them from that angle I had it at first. Like, it very much looks like this is how they're expecting you to play this particular game. Boomerang in Zelda 1 is easily the best item. I don't know how to kill all these guys, but I'm going to anyway. Or not, because I got grabbed. That's okay. I don't know how crazy 3D some of the enemies get. I've only really seen like the first dungeon done this way, so we're going to experience some of this together. And while I know the first Zelda game, I haven't played it for a while, so some stuff I don't have memorized. Those guys have done a lot of the Zelda randomizer. I've never actually done a full clear of a Zelda randomizer. Although that's just more from not actually putting a lot of time into it. It's not to say that I wouldn't enjoy it. But I like this. This is a fun little diversion. So this time we're going to grab that key. And we're not going to... Okay. I, let's get that out of our system now so later in the game we don't have to deal with getting grabbed. So I'm going to give a shout out to Patton Plays because he is the one that made me aware of this emulator. And it wasn't too expensive on Steam. I didn't get it the day that it came out and I know there was a sale, but I'm not sure how long that sale was going for. But just kind of waiting till I had a day off to sink my teeth into it see how the recording and everything would go. I know that I don't have the beefiest system, so I want to make sure that this wouldn't be all funky if I tried to record it. But I might be looking into getting a desktop here. Now that I've got my taxes back. I'm not sure on that yet. But it's an idea I'm tossing around. First, I think I need to get the internet set up again. Thank you for the clock on the last enemy. That's always how it seems to pan out, isn't it? So I'm actually going to ignore these guys today. Coming here to Aqua Menace. Let's zoom you in a bit. Okay, let's remember that bob and weave here. Just going to fire. I don't want to... As I say, I didn't want to take another hit, but I was kind of hoping he'd be more 3D, kind of like the levers instead of this, uh... Does he always hang out that far in the wall? <laughs> I'm not doing a very good job of playing the first Zelda here, am I? We're going to go ahead and leave this zoom in, why not? I wanted to be all dramatic for the boss fight, but he didn't really looks that dramatic. Once again with the clock. The last enemy. I like the way that they spin. 
I mean, I'm sure there's some people that are going to be looking at this and they're going, Oh, that looks terrible. Like, why? The original looks better. And I do think the original looks very good. Like, I'm not saying this looks better. I just think it looks neat. I find it more as a curiosity. And I thought, hey, this is something that maybe not a lot of people have seen this emulator yet. So it'd be interesting to to show off. And I was hoping that my years of playing Zelda would help me not look foolish on the internet, but you know how that goes. But this is going to be a big recording day for me, actually. I'm going to try and get three videos recorded if I can pull it off. Okay. I'm just not going to mess with those guys until I absolutely have to, because I'm doing terrible at them. Give me a heart. No? I do kind of wonder how some of the quirks from the NES game translate over here, like... There's the glitch where you can come into this dungeon and leave and come back in and the door is unlocked. I don't know if something like that still works. And you know I saw something funky with Mega Man 2 when I was playing Bubble Man stage. Just fiddling around with my controller and everything. And actually, this works really good with my controller, out of the box. I was kind of worried that the... 3D functions of the emulator would make it funky to play with, but I'm glad that it... ...works really well, almost like it was built for this kind of controller in mind. Okay. I hope you guys like level 1, because apparently we're just going to run through it a hundred times. I wasn't even wanting to fight them, I was just trying to keep them away from the stupid door. <laughs> Yeah, I think when I post this on Talking Time, this is going to go in the Not Worth Its Own Thread thread, because we've already got Let's Plays of the original Zelda. Oh, bombs! That almost made the 40th trip through the dungeon worth it. Okay. All right. I can dig it. Okay. Do not grab me. I don't remember how many hits Aquamenus takes, but enough. I could just bomb him. Actually, since we have bombs, we can at least put in the shortcut here that I wasn't ever expecting to need to use, because... Why would you fail level 1 300 times? I can't even blame that on anything other than myself. Oh, that was not the button that I wanted. Okay, that looks a little funky. 
the bomb door did, but... Let's just make a bomb rush for the boss and hit him while we still have sword beams. I kept expecting that guy to stop and throw a boomerang, and I wanted to be out of his range when he did, and then he just strutted along like nothing. Oh, we can go buy a candle now. I thought this was going to be a quick two-dungeon video, and then we spent an hour in Dungeon 1. There we go. Nice big rotatey heart. Is the Triforce rotating too? Alright, well let's uh, zoom in for this. Because I like that closeness. Okay, let's get rid of this guy and then we can get this back out. There's a little bit of slowdown, but I know there's slowdown at screens like this in the game anyway. Alright, let's head this way. Through the desert. When I get to where the levers aren't the red ones, I should... Maybe show off how they look. Well, that was not the way I wanted to rotate it, but yeah, see how they look in 3D? I don't like the blue levers very much, though. The red ones are kind of easy to deal with. I do kind of think it'd be cool if more of the enemies had that 3D look, though. It kind of makes them pop out a little more from the others. I missed it. No? There we go. That rock does look a little funky in 3D. See, there's Armo statues up here. What do they look like? They're flat too, but what happens when I touch them? They're still kind of flat. Okay. Okay. Oh, that wasn't the one I wanted either. I think that that's referencing where Dungeon 1 is. Which is kind of odd to me, because you would think you would see that tree and try to go in it before you'd think to move that statue and go in it. Okay, I don't know if uh, it's liking this as much. But we're gonna... Hello?
Yeah, the main thing that might stop me from recording this might be that slowdown, actually. I mean, we'll keep it up for a little more. We can go get some goodies now. We can go grab that white sword. Oh yeah, let's uh, not use all our bombs in the process. Yeah, that slowdown's a little worse than I was expecting. I don't know if that's just a side effect of using OBS or what. Oh yeah, I could've done my warp around trick there, but that's okay. Okay, the Lionel's not in 3D either. Well, maybe my plan to record this whole game in 3D is not going to go if the slowdown's like that. But I'm sure that that's just my system. I don't know how the emulator works, but... I'm not going to write it off entirely. It's honestly more that the music is kind of annoying me a little bit there. Also, Link's little box is kind of odd to me. Right, should we go past McLean's bush here? Yeah, I'm curious if they're gonna keep working on this profile and make more of the enemies 3D. Because, you know, they could make Link look like the amiibo that they did. The 3D Link Amiibo. But I can see that being more effort than they want to do. Well, I think we're going to do... Dungeon 2, and I'm going to call this a video. And maybe... I'll see what people think. Okay, that's weird. There's water coming on the bridge, because this is the same tile they use for the bridges on the water, but this is not a water bridge. So that's kind of funny. Alright, Dungeon 2. It is the dark nuts that kind of horrify me in this setup. I 
just because sometimes it's hard to tell where you're at. Once again with the clock. Well, my goal is to not die to Dodongo a hundred thousand times. And yes, I'm not doing speedrun strats. I'm going to every screen. Which actually, I don't think I did that in the first dungeon, now that I think about it. Ooh, got the leader. Okay, grab the map for the moon dungeon here. Yeah, like I know you can skip a good chunk of this dungeon because I've used all these keys to go to dead end rooms or rooms we don't care about. And there's our magical boomerang. Alrighty, it's not a black worm, McLean. You're okay. I need to rewatch that let's play that McLean did of the. It was the Zelda Classic Fourth Quest, and they had all these custom enemies. So I do notice the quirk that the shadows kind of show that the wall doesn't actually exist until it finishes loading in the screen. I don't know if that makes sense. It made sense in my head. Like, once the wall goes off the screen, the shadow goes off the screen. I mean, yeah, I don't like smoke either. Should we go for some epic boss times? I'll leave the bombs there. He might be tricky to do the... the sword strat with. So maybe I'll just go for... that method. All right, let's go grab those other bombs that I didn't pick up. And hey, that's Dungeon 2 down. We could go grab our candle and stuff. I 
don't know where the best place to buy a candle is off the top of my head. I think near the start. And I feel like I'm just getting wrecked by these Zelda enemies that I should be really good against. Actually, come to think of it, there's a good spot for the arrow near here, too. head down and go to what I used to call the money road where all the tech tights were. I can kind of see the, like, the shape of the actual rock the way that it looked on the NES as I look at this now. Levers are always nice with the money too, the red ones are anyway. When I don't walk straight into them, that's nice. a lot of stuff early on. These guys are kind of funky up there in the rocks. But yeah, sometimes starting out, this is a good place to go because you can get bombs from these guys and blue rupees. You guys just don't want to give me any hearts. So the rupees have this kind of weird look like they look like a donut. Like a rupee shaped donut. Which is interesting. That's not how I would have pictured rupees looking but now I kind of want someone to make a Zelda rupee donut I just forget what's in this cave down here. Alright, well I don't think I'm going to buy a potion, but we can go ahead and get a potion shop unlocked. I think one time somebody wrote to Nintendo Power and asked them, what does this letter say? And they also asked, like, what is the letter that you get in Zelda 2 
from Vagusi. <laughs> Like, hey, Bagu, sent this letter that says to open the bridge, but what does the letter actually say? I see that the palette for Link still changes in this dungeon. So I'm gonna go and we're gonna try these dark nuts, and then we're gonna do this dungeon, and I think if I game over that's gonna be the end of the video. Unfortunately, Dark Nuts aren't too bad if you have a Sword Beam. Although, even in general, I think that a lot of the Dark Nuts is just getting their movement down. You know, my nephew watches my videos, and I keep trying to get him to try retro games, and... I mean, I guess he likes retro games because two of his favorite games are Mario 64 and Ocarina of Time, but, I mean, more retro than that. But, he's watched me play Mario 3, and he's watched me play Mega Man 2, and because of that, those are two of his favorite games. But, like... I tried to get him to play Mario World because he has the online on the Switch. And he, it's frustrating for him because he doesn't really know how to play the game. He doesn't know the levels. And it's like, well... But that's you. you get that from playing the game. Like, I know if he sat down and played... This game, he would get frustrated because of how the Dark Nuts move, for example, or he'd be frustrated because he didn't know where stuff was, but, like, that's the game. You know, I didn't sit down and play Mario 3 the first time and know everything about that game. Yes, I got a guidebook eventually, but I'm having the guidebook doesn't teach you that if you jump like this, you're going to make the jump, and if you don't jump like this, you're going to fall into lava, for example. So, yeah, like, if he came into this dungeon, he'd fight these dark nuts, and he'd be really frustrated, because they're funky and weird, but... You just kind of pick that up by playing the game, that's... Ooh, those look weird. Look at them. I like that look. It does kind of reiterate my point from before, though. Like, I wish more of the enemies had that 3D look. Which I guess would make it more like a... Like a 3D game here as well. Alrighty, I think we're gonna save that. We got way too many deaths. Only five? I thought it would be way more than that, but I'm gonna call it for there. I think that was a good show off of this 3D Sen. I like it a lot. I think it's neat, actually. I don't have a lot of stuff loaded in here, but let's see here. I can show off a little bit. Let's do this. Just to show off some of the other games on here. I haven't actually played this one yet. Oh, 
Okay, he doesn't like that. I don't think I'll be playing this one very much. Holy cow. <laughs> I don't know if that's just because I'm recording with OBS, because I did Mega Man 2 earlier, and Mega Man 2 was fine. Let's see. Yeah, see? This title screen, which looks more intricate than the one that was in Mega Man 2, isn't causing all that... I like the shadows and stuff. And look at this. This is cool. So I'm not sure if I'll play the rest of Zelda. Maybe I'll still do other stuff with this emulator. But for now, I think we're going to call it. So I will see you next time. And as always, until next time, this has been Red Silvers. Have yourself a good night. <laughs>